Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. In our previous example, we tried to select a power plant by estimating the power required by the system during this climb. So, in this, while estimating this, what we assumed is the density during this climb remains constant, which we considered as sea level density, which is 1.225 meter cube. So, let us repeat the same exercise by considering density at 1 kilometer altitude right? and see what is the difference in the power requirement. Now, when you select a power plant, you need to select based upon the maximum requirement. Let us see which of this is going to have the maximum requirement, either at sea level or at 1 kilometer altitude. Now, what we have from yesterday, we figured out the rate of climb as for this particular case is 5.55 meters per second, which is the vertical velocity of climb. And since we need to fly at 20 meters per second, what we have V infinity sine gamma, this rate of climb is equals to 5.5. Gamma is sin inverse 5.5 divided by 20 meters per second, which is approximately 16 degrees. Right. Gamma is 16 degrees here. So, from equations of climb, climb 1 and climb 2, Cl1 and Cl2, what we have? So, T minus D is equals to W sin gamma, right. So, rate of climb is equals to power available minus power required divided by weight. This implies the power available, the power that the power, I mean the engine has to deliver is equals to rate of climb times the weight of the system plus power required this is which is density into corresponding velocity of climb. So, the rate of climb here is 5.5. We need to figure out what is the D and yeah, what should be the drag here. If you know that, then we will be able to estimate the corresponding power that has to be delivered from the power plant. So, rate of climb into W plus half rho V infinity square S, so it will be V infinity cube S into C D naught plus K into C L square. We have C D naught and K from here, right. So, now we need to figure out what is the density at 1 kilometer altitude. So, to do that, let us recall our standard atmosphere. First, we will try to convert the geometric altitude to geopotential altitude r into hg by r plus hg, where r is radius of earth approximately 6400 kilometers. Right. So, from here for 1 kilometer altitude, it will be approximately 999.8 meters, which is almost equivalent to Hg, right. So, it is not going to make much of a difference. Now, I have rho 2 by rho 1 or rho at a altitude divided by rho at sea level is equals to T at an altitude by C sea level temperature raised to the power of minus g naught by 
they are minus 1 right where g naught is 9.81 meters per second square and a is minus 6.5 kelvin per kilometer and r is 287 joule per kg kelvin it's a universal gas constant right this equals to rho naught into what is rho naught rho naught is 1.225 kg per meter cube right so how to find t we know from the def definition of lapse rate which is a is equals to a is equals to dh by dt uh, sorry dt by dh so t2 is equals to t1 plus a into h2 minus h1 for a gradient layer so a is minus 6.5 for the first gradient layer right now what is rho is 1.225 into T1 plus A into H2 minus H1 divided by T naught, T naught in this case minus G naught by AR minus 1. So, if you solve this, the density at this part at, the, at 1 kilometer it turns out to be 1.116 kg per meter cube. Now, substituting this density in this equation, five point five meters per second into three point five kg multiplied by nine point eight one to convert this into newtons and half into what is the density here? One point one one six into 20 cube into 0 0.787 0 0.787 multiplied by 0 0.35 plus 0.16 cl square so for the same flight condition we need to find out the corresponding cl values here right So, the CL for this condition is we have L is equals to W cos gamma from CL2 equation CL2 right. So, what is CL it's twice the wing loading into cos, cos gamma divided by density at 1 kilometer we have to use at 1 kilometer altitude into V infinity square right. So, this turns out to be 1 point 0 0.187 let me just check the CL 0 0.1877 this is the CL for this case now substitute this CL here in this equation to figure out what is the corresponding power requirement from the power plant right if you sub substitute that it will be 331.47 watts four seven watts right now what is the shaft power required to achieve this flight flight conditions this is power actually required by the system entire system divided by propeller efficiency this is 331.47 divided by 0.85 is approximately 3 389.97 watts
right? This is the shaft power that is required at 1 kilometer altitude. Right? This is the power requirement from the system. So, when we calculated the same shaft power at sea level, what we So, you have to consider the highest shaft power that is required, right? Then you have to use this shaft power to select the corresponding power plant by a factor of safety. Right? So, till now we assume that the weight of the aircraft is given or the UAV is given, but for a designer it is never an input, weight is never an input. You have to estimate the weight of the system. So, in order to estimate the weight, we need to understand the total weight, how this total weight of the system is summed up, right? What are the com components that are contributing towards this total weight? What are the major components? Now, let us look at weight estimation. So, what does this weight estimation depends upon? Why it varies from one aircraft to the other aircraft or one UAV to the other UAV? Okay. So, there is something called mission requirements. Right. So, this weight of a system varies from one aircraft to the other aircraft or one UAV to the other UAV based upon the mission requirements. Mission requirement or set of the task that this aircraft has to perform or the set of performance parameters that this aircraft has to, has to possess, right. So, what will be a typical mission requirement of a UAV? Say, again going back to the profile, right, mission profile. So, it has to climb to a certain altitude, either it has to cruise to a different location and land. Right. So, again climb and in some cases you also have take off, right. There is something also called take off, climb, cruise, descent or glide you can say landing, approach and land, right. So, this is one such profile what this UAV has to perform, mission profile what this UAV has to perform. And here in this cruise, so although you have two different UAV, I mean two UAVs which are performing the same similar type of mission profile, the weight can vary, right. So, this entirely depends upon the cruise as well as the weight it has to carry. So, what do you have in a UAV in the first place? We are talking about fixed wing UAV, right? So, what we have is wing, tail, fuselage, right? All these things sums up to structure. Right? And we have a pro engine or a power plant, right? So, this is a propulsion system. What is the purpose of this purpose of any UAV? Of course, it is definitely not going to carry passengers, but it is designed to perform a task which involves either sensing or taking payload from one 
one location or uh, uh, taking certain cargo from one location to the other location right so either sensors and all these things are considered as payloads right so they will be payload right at the same time you have you have a power plant here and this power plant has to be so where do this energy I mean, how this power plant is running? It ha there should be a onboard energy storage, right? So, energy supply. So, this can be broadly considered this way. Uh, of course, there will be avionics, right? Which can, which will be a smaller percentage compared to all these things, and you can sum it up to any, either of this, either structure or pro propulsion part, right? So. The total weight of this UAV is contributed from structure, power plant, or propulsion system, and payload. Same time, you have energy supply. In some cases, it is fuel or battery right either fuel or battery now why this weight changes from UA to UAV it may have to carry different payloads right a smaller UAV has to, is a, may supposed to carry a smaller camera which may weigh up to 250 grams right and it may it it can be used for a surveillance purpose with a one hour endurance right so as the requirement changes the weight changes weight of the system changes right so there can be a heroin class uav where uh, it's of 2000 kg class where the structural weight is the structure has to be designed accordingly right whatever the payload that he has to carry and that can't be compared with the weight of a 5 kg uav right the structural weight of a 2000 kg uav cannot be compared with a 5 kg uav it right, all together a different story for that. Now, how to start with the weight estimation? Right? So, we broadly understood that these are the major components that contribute towards the total weight of the system. Right? How to start with this? How to start estimating these weights? If I know the individual components, then I will get to know what is the total weight. That is the whole idea. Right? Now, Payload is one thing which is given as an input, right? That comes from the mission requirements. So this is a known quantity. So unknown for this new design, before starting anything, the unknown for this new design will be what is the structural weight, what is the propulsion weight, and what is the fuel weight ratio, right? Now, how to start? Let us say W is a total weight. Can I write this as W or W takeoff? or maximum takeoff weight or takeoff weight whatever it is right into w takeoff plus w propulsion system w payload plus so let me represent payload as pl propulsion st structures pr stands for propulsion pl stands for payload and weight of the fuel so let us initially talk about the fuel powered ua right so the energy is supplied to this power plant is by means of fuel right? so this is w take So where WTO is equivalent to WMTOW, maximum takeoff weight, MTOW, is a maximum take off or 
take off weight simply take off weight. ST stands for structural weight ratio ST bar W T bar. WPR by WT was stands for propulsion propulsion weight ratio WPL stands for payload weight of payload Fuel weight pressure. Right? So let us consider this equation as W one. Let this be weight estimation one, W E one. This as W E two okay. Now let us rewrite this W E two. So W take off into one minus W structural weight to W overall take off weight minus W propulsion weight to W takeoff and fuel weight ratio yeah minus fuel weight ratio is equals to or is the what we left with the right hand side is a payload weight of the payload. This implies W takeoff is equals to W payload over 1 minus structural weight fraction subtracted by propulsion weight fraction and then minus fuel weight fraction. So, if you know these values the structural weight ratio, propulsion weight ratio and fuel weight ratio, you will be able to since payload will be given as an input there, you will be able to figure out what is the overall takeoff weight. Right. So, why we call this as estimate here, why it is an estimation? There should be some meaning right, because we are not actually calculating, we are trying to estimate based upon the historical data here. So, the structural to takeoff weight ratio we consider this from the historical data of the aircrafts which are of which are designed to perform this similar mission right. At the same time propulsion weight ratio we will do we will also figure out it from the historical database of the UAVs which are designed to perform the similar mission requirements right. And then when you are doing this like when you are trying to estimate and take uh, when considering the by considering the values of uh, previous UAVs, what is the new with this WT1? What is the new with this particular UAV that you are going to design? So, so this fuel weight ratio will vary. Okay, if you are designing a UAV based upon this uh, IC engine, which has where fuel is fuel is the energy that is supplied to the system, right? So, if you are designing that UAV, so this fuel consumption or the ratio changes based upon your particular mission requirement, this particular mission requirement, right. So, say if you want to, so your previous UAVs may be doing a 1 hour cruise or 2 hour cruise. So, your UAV may, the one that you are going to design may have to perform a 5 hours endurance, right, or should be capable of uh, 
traveling 30, uh, 500 kilometers instead of 200 kilometers. Let us say if 200 is the range of previous UAVs, right? So this factor initially is going to affect this W takeoff, right? Now once you know what is the takeoff weight for the so initial iteration, right? Then you'll be able to figure out. Once you know the takeoff weight, you'll be able to find out what is the corresponding power requirement. Right? If you know the power requirement for various phases based upon the mission requirement, right? you need to say if this is a typical mission, you need to know what is the power requirement during climb, during cruise, during takeoff. Right? So takeoff it will be very minimal here anyways. Right? So if you know the power requirement, you'll be able to select the corresponding power plant. Once you have the power plant, you have an accurate value of this WPR here of the propulsion system, right? You have an accurate value here. Now you need to figure out what is the structural weight based upon this. Once you have the accurate value of this propulsion power plant, then you will be able to, then you have to again iterate this step, iterate the process and you have to update the fuel weight again. Once you have the, these two, then you will be able to find out what is the structural weight because you will be designing the structure, right? So once you have all these values, you are actually bringing this equation to you to the particular UAV that you are going to design, right? So you have started with the U data of the previous UAVs, but right now you are trying to adapt this equation to your particular design, right? Let us do this step by step, right? First, we need to understand what is this weight ratios. What are these weight ratios? So let us segment this mission profile. So the starting of takeoff is consider this as one, and the starting of climb consider this as two, and the starting point of this crew is consider uh, is is three, and the end of crew is four, and say five is the starting of landing and finally 6, this point 0.6 is a, what do you call, once you landed and yeah, end of the mission, okay. So how much do you, time do you think takeoff require? So in, in our first introductory lecture, we saw a flying wing, right? Flight of a flying wing where there is typically there is no takeoff. We just launched hand launch system, right? So we can at max consider a takeoff of 30 seconds or half a minute, right? So climb maybe three minutes or two minutes, two to three minutes. Whereas cruise can range from anything between 60 minutes to or 1 hour to say 10 hours, 24 hours, right? It depends. Right? And descent, again it may take 2 to 3 minutes. Generally it will be a gliding flight, glide. So where the fuel consumption is very, very minimal, right? And once you land it, then it may take around, say, half a minute again, 30 seconds or 0 0.5 minute. That's a 0 0.5 minute. This is also about 0 0.5 minute. So now it is clear that uh, the fuel consumption is maximum during cruise, right? That means if you look at the fraction W4 by W3 will be higher compared to W3 by W2 and W2 by W1, right? At the same time W5 by W4 and W6 by W5. So we need to figure out this fuel, fuel load that need to be carried in order to perform this particular task, which is either cruise or loiter and a combination of that, that right? At some some applications may need only loiter around the launch point, right? Surveillance about the launch point. In some applications, you have you have to reach to a particular destination and then perform a surveillance there, right? So it may in involve both cruise and loiter. 
So the major time that is spent due, uh, 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 the major time that is spent here is for Cruise as well as the loiter, right? Loiter is see, you have to reach a desti particular destination and perform a loitering and may come back to the home, right? So cruise, loiter, climb, take off. So major time of this mission is spent in performing cruise and loiter missions. Right? So we need to figure out what is the fuel loads for this cruise and loiter. At the same time, let us also look from the historical database what is the fuel ratios for various mission mission segments. Right. So serial number, let us say mission segments. weight fractions. So let us say first say taxi and take off. So you can't lift 800 kg UAV, definitely from your hangar you have to take it to the runway. So you need to do a taxi, at the same time you need to take off from the launch point, right? So typical value of this is 0 0.98, right? So this is from the historical database of 150 aircrafts, right? 150 UAVs. So the second one, yeah, 150 or 130 to 150 UAVs, right? And the second one is climb. So the third one is say descent. So we can't comment much about this cruise because if for each and every UAV the mission is different. You can't compare it. Right. The fourth one is uh, landing, approach and landing. So typical values of this are This is 0 0.97, this is 0 0.98, this is 0 0.998, this is 0 0.99, I'm sorry. So these values are from historical database. See if you look at this, the it is almost equal to 1, that is W3 by say in this case W2 by W1 is almost equal to 1 compared to overall takeoff weight the fuel weight consumed is very, very less, right? Similarly, you can see for the climb, it is also 0 0.97 and for descent, it is 0 0.99 and approach and landing, it is 0 0.99, right? So here it is almost more closer to 1, right? So the major difference for each and every design ha will come due to the cruise and loiter. That is a major segment of your mission, right? Now let us estimate this loads for this fuel, fuel loads for this particular segment, cruise and loiter, right? So what is this fuel weight? What do you think is the fuel weight? For any aircraft, let us say, a fuel powered aircraft. So what do you think is a fuel weight here? So you have W1 and W6 
So the difference between W1 and W6 is the fuel weight. Do you want to think so? W1 minus W6. What is that? Fuel weight. Fuel weight is WF is equals to W1 minus W6, where W1 is the maximum takeoff weight and W6 is after landing. Right. So during this entire process, whatever the fuel that has been consumed will be WF. This is straightforward. So WF is equals to W1 into 1 minus W6 by W1, right? Where W1 is a takeoff weight, am I correct? So to estimate this WF by W takeoff we need to find out what is the weight ratio of W6 by W1. Since we have segmented this mission profile, we can express this W6 by W1 as, okay. I will erase this part. This is, this equation, name it as W3 and this equation is WE4 weight estimation equation 4 and this is weight estimation equation 5, right. So what is this W6 by W1? So we have various segments here, right, which are, see the climb dynamics is completely different to takeoff dynamics. That means the fuel consumption or the power requirements are different and the fuel consumption is different here. Whereas in cruise, again, the dynamics compared to climb and descent are completely different. And, and so the fuel consumption, right? So since each segment has different dynamics and different fuel consumption, right? So we can express this as W2 by W1 into W3 by W2 into W4 by W3 into W5 by W4 into W6 by W5. Am I correct? Am I correct? This one. to 5, right? So in this case it is, double, we just witnessed like uh, from the table with the historical database. We looked at like what is W2 by W1, W3 by W2 and W5 by W4 and W6 by W4. So this particular weight ratio belongs to descent which is almost 0 0.99 right this is this corresponds to landing phase which is 0 0.998 so this is for cruise so to start with the initial estimate, the unknown is this cruise part, right? Why? Because so these things can be compared with the, I mean, can be considered from the historical database. This corresponds to the climb phase, and it is approximately 0 0.97, and this is again 0 0.98. Take off, take off phase, which is 0 0.98. 0 0.98. So your new design will vary because the weight, fuel weight ratio of your new design will majorly differ with the previous design because of this cruise and loiter phase, this W4 by W3 phase, right? 
Now, how to figure out this W4 by W3 phase? Now, let us look at something called range and endurance or loiter. So, let us confine ourselves to this propeller driven aircraft, right? Because we are not going to, I mean, we do not see generally a jet driven unmanned system, right? So, let us look at the propeller driven system here. And why range and endurance? It talks about the distance that you can travel with the with a given load of fuel, right? That means you can you will be able to figure out the fuel load for to travel a particular distance. Because crew is we say one hour or ten hours, right? Or so many kilometers. So when you mention that from this mission requirements that means you are specifying either range or endurance of the system right so once you know the range what should be the corresponding fuel load that you need to carry to perform this particular task right so let us define since we are talking about ic engines right or a propeller driven engine So, let us consider this fuel powered IC engine, fuel powered IC engine. So, the output that you get is actual output will be this shaft power, whatever the output that you have from this is a shaft power and you use a propeller to convert this to useful power, right, power available from the system, which is the useful power that that accelerates the, your aircraft or uh, provides the required velocity for this UAV, right. Now, let us have a look at it, it is worth showing this IC engine, it is a small, small IC engine, right. Uh, so, this is a carburetor that controls the fuel air mixture and you, there is a valve inside with which you can control this fuel air mixture and the corresponding rpm right and the shaft power so what is shaft power here the power that is available along this shaft right so it is in this is a mechanical power that is that will be available by so this is a fuel fuel inlet the valve that you can see here is a fuel inlet right so whatever the fuel that is going to use to generate this power Right. So, in other words, what is the amount of fuel that is consumed to produce a unit of power? Right. So, that is defined as specific fuel consumption. Right. Specific fuel consumption for this IC engine is CP, which is defined as weight of the fuel consumed in producing unit power. So, what are the units of this? Newton per watt hour, Newton per watt hour, right. This is for IC engine. So, see this shaft power is converted to useful power by means of this propeller, by means of, I mean, we are using a combination of propeller with this IC engine to convert this mechanical power to the useful power, right. So, the power that is available the specific fuel consumption is defined with respect to this shaft power right. we know the useful power to us is the propeller efficiency times this shaft power right this is the propeller efficiency how efficient this propeller is going to convert this available mechanical power to the useful power for us So, we can also look at this electric powered systems, right. This is a brushless motor, it is an outrunner brushless motor and there is a propeller combination here. So, for this IC engine, fuel is given as an input, 
right for uh, propeller based uh, for uh, electric based system we give we use battery battery power as an input to this brushless motor right and again here the output will be a shaft power in either the case the output output is a mechanical power by means of this propeller we convert it into the, the useful power right useful power for ua right so this is typically a 1100 kv kv motor right which means it rotates at 1100 rp it has an rpm of 1100 per volt right so when you are operating this with four cell battery which is approximately 12 volts right so you you have to multiply the corresponding rpm right and that's a maximum maximum kv right and it will deliver a thrust of 2 kg right when operated at when operated using a 12 volts battery and there is also a ducted fan right which is also a which is also powered by electricity like we use on board battery to power this particular power plant right so you you can see here there is a fan right so the output again here is a shaft power see this is the back side of this particular edf we call it as electric electric ducted fan right so the so the output is a shaft power here It, you it has a similar concept of this uh, outrunner motor brushless outrunner motor so the only thing is here to minimize the propeller diameter right we use fan right a series of fans here series or here it is a single fan with multiple blades right so this is going to deliver you the this fan is going to convert the available mechanical power to the useful power so in all the cases we need to multiply the available shaft power with the efficiency so by the way this particular edf delivers a 4.5 kg thrust uh, with a 6s battery which is approximately 24 volts is an input voltage to this and you can control the speed by means of speed controller like we will discuss about this things in the later lectures and one more announcement that i would like to make is like Uh, most of the students were mistaken this course as a aero modeling course right some of those some of the students so so i kindly request you not to mix this course with a aero modeling course right and we are talking about design no design when you say it is a three dimensional i mean either 3d cad model that that has to come as an output so the 3d when you say 3d cad model it has certain geometry with size right wing size fuselage size what is the engine size or the engine capacity and what is the tail size so all these numbers we arrive by means of this dynamics aircraft dynamics right with the help of flight stability i mean both performance and stability control we use those concepts and moreover aircraft design or a uav design is a synthesis of this performance and stability and control right although you may not be learning new things here but you will try to apply what you have learned in performance and stability and control course to design the flight vehicle right of course we in one lecture one of these lectures we will try to show you how to build a uav but that's not the mo main motto motive of this particular course right so coming back to this like uh, whatever the shaft power available either from the fuel based or the electric based engine it has to be multiplied by by the efficiency factor of the propeller or the ducted or the fan right to get the available power right so now the power available is a power uh, propeller efficiency times shaft power, power and we have defined something called specific fuel consumption of this propeller based engine right so specific fuel consumption here is equals to the amount of fuel consumed to produce unit power right what happens to a jet engine of course we will not be talking about much about jet engines but we need to define specific fuel consumption is a thrust specific fuel consumption is defined as weight of the fuel consumed in producing unit thrust so you, you units are newton per newton right 
so this is the thrust specific fuel consumption this is specific fuel consumption now since we are talking about cruise range range is like how what is the distance that you travel in the cru during cruise right even endurance for, for that case is the same it's talk, we will talk about cruise both these parameters talks about cruise which means you have constant velocity which is the distance traveled over particular time right so this dx is equals to v infinity into dt right So dx is v infinity into dt and yeah and if I integrate this from 0 to r range which happens over a time t1 to t2 right so this is v infinity into dt right so this integration is the range r T1 to T2, V infinity dt. Again, we need to discuss what is. Uh, okay, let us go back to this weight again. Let us look at this weight. Say, what is weight of the fuel? A total weight of this aircraft is equals to. weight of the fuel plus total weight other than fuel right do you accept this so total weight of the aircraft is equals to weight of the fuel plus weight of the aircraft minus fuel So this may include payload. I see empty. We can't say it as empty weight, right? So it may also include payload and WS is the fuel. So now say the change in the total aircraft weight is. The change due to fuel consumption because this is going to remain constant. This is d by dt of wf, which is w dot f, right? So, this d by dt is w dot of the aircraft is the w dot of the fuel, right? Do you accept this? Okay. Now, what is w dot f here? For a propeller engine, W dot F is equals to or DW by DT is equals to CP into PSH, right? Shaft power. What is shaft power? Shaft power is efficiency. Uh, proper available power divided by efficiency efficiency of the propeller so what is available power this is a thrust into the velocity right it's a propeller efficiency okay now what is dt dt is equals to eta of the propeller divided by cp into t into v infinity right into dwf 
we just manipulated this equation. Okay. So, you may consider this as this equation as W8, WE8, weight estimation 8. So, now substitute this dt in this equation. Let us substitute the dt in this equation, range equation. So, so from t1 to t2, what you have is w at t1 say wi say wi plus 1 at t2. Okay. So, this is at the starting of this mission which is t1 and the end of this particular segment of this mission. So, this is V infinity, V infinity times eta of the propel, propeller efficiency divided by C p into T into V infinity into d w of the fuel. So, do not you think this d w of the fuel is equals to d w of the aircraft C p into T into V infinity into d w since d w is equals to d w f right. Yeah, we can change this to d w right. Now, let us integrate this and what is the relation between C p and C? We will look into that once we finish this we will look into it. range is equals to integral w i to w i plus 1. So, again small correction. So, here the c c p is minus w dot of f divided by p s h right. You have to include minus here. So, because the reduction in weight so, w f is a reduction in weight. So, it is negative. So, C p is a figure of merit. So, it is like negative into negative ultimately C p becomes positive here. So, C p is defined as minus of w f. Similarly, C is defined as minus w dot by t. Right. Please make a correction here. So, so, the same will be reflected here like substituting minus here minus of heat of the propeller by C p into w by t into d w by w. Right. This equals minus w i plus 1 to w i right is equals to eta of propeller into C p into what is w by t? Since this is cruise right what we have from C 1 and C 2? C 1, C 2, L is equals to W is C 2 and T is equals to D. So, T W by T is L by D. So, I can substitute L by D in this equation, this equals to. So, this is L by D into D W by W, right. Okay. So, this is w of i plus 1 to w i r is equals to eta p and c p remains constant right throughout the flight and then l by d since it is a cruise you will be flying at a constant l by d here right? and what you have is d w by w this equals eta of the propeller by C p into L by D into L n of W i by W i plus 1 right. So, for a given fuel fuel load and the weight of this aircraft you will be able to 
and if you know the L by D of your flight, you will be able to fly, have a range R, right? Yeah. So, if you want to, if you want the maximum range, so finally range is equals to eta P by C P into L by D into L n of W i by W i plus. So, this is your range which can be used for weight estimation W e 8 this can be 9 this is our ninth equation for weight, weight estimation. Now, if you want to maximize the range you have to maximize the L by D right L by D max will directly reflect in your range maximum. So, what is the condition for L by D maximum? So, C L has to be root over C, C L by D max is so R max you can have when your L by D is maximum. Right. So, when is L by D max? What is the condition for L by D max? So, L by D max is equals to 1 by root over 4 k C D naught, right? Where C L for L by D max is root over C D naught by k and C D for L by D max is equals to 2 C D naught. Why is the profile drag? The induced drag is equals to profile drag in this case. So, if you substitute this, the range maximum will be eta p by C p into 1 by root over 4 k C D naught ln of w i by w i plus 1 right this is the maximum range that you can obtain for a given fuel load and the corresponding velocity for r max will be root over twice the wing loading by rho into root over k by c d naught to the power of 1 by 2 or 4th root of root over C D naught by k. Right. Now, coming back to this W 3 9, what we are interested is interested in is finding out the weight ratio W i by W i plus 1. Right. So, or say W i plus 1 by W i otherwise W i by W i plus 1 to start with is equals to E raise, e raise to the power of R into C p by eta p into L by D. Right. So, this is a weight fraction then W i plus 1 by W i is equals to e raise to the power of minus range into C p by eta p into L by d. So, this is your fuel weight ratio that you need to carry. So, this is your W e 10. So, if you want to have a range right as per your mission requirement you need to carry this much fuel load. So, the assumption that you have to make here is what is your L by D of your flight right and what what can be the propeller efficiency as well as from the historical data you will get to know what is the C p of this particular I mean C p of the engine that is used for this particular weight class of vehicles right. 